Stitch combinations in this video are based on the Lazy Daisy. I did draw a line to work it on. I actually drew three lines and found that I didn't use the two outside ones, so the middle one is really what I'm using. So I'm going to start by, in the center, making a group of six Lazy Daisies. I put two of them on the horizontal line. And I really would like to come up in the same hole for all six of them. And I am trying to keep the petals about the same length. And then I'm going to come up on both the top and the bottom and add two more at an angle. And this is what I thought I was going to use my other two lines for, but if I was going to do that, I needed them to be closer together than where I put them. And I mean, we, you can do this. It's just positioning your lazy daisies is all this combination stitch is. Here. And here. And then, after we finish, and if you're doing them grouped like they are on the card, you're gonna have two whole ones in the middle. And then on each side, you're going to have two half ones. Kind of pointing in toward the center. So I'm going to come over here and do one on the horizontal line. And then one top and one bottom at the angle. And then I'm going to do another one of those just beyond this one. Now to finish it off, we are going to come in and put a colonial knot in the center of each of those. You could also use a bead or a French knot. pistol stitch might be kind of cool too. If you added a pistol stitch with the knot coming into the center here and the straight coming out here, you'd kind of have a shooting star flower. As it is, the ones with three petals kind of look like a cone flower. So there is that combination. This next, next combination is a combination of Lazy Daisy straight stitch and French knot. And I was looking at it and I thought it would be easier to keep your spacing consistent if the straight stitches that were going on the horizontal and I did draw a line were done with a large back stitch and then I could come in and add my lazy daisies and my other straight stitches. So that's what I did. I did a large back stitch on a horizontal line and then I'm coming up in between every other back stitch I am putting in A lazy daisy going, two lazy daisies going vertical off of my back stitch. Which a back stitch is nothing but a whole bunch of straight stitches connected, so that works. 
and then alternating between those lazy daisies are four straight stitches and they're basically making an X you could make it a cross stitch except we're going to come back in those and put in a French knot so it's easier if there's still a hole there but if you would rather do a cross stitch that is certainly fine And then the next one again, two lazy daisies going perpendicular to my, my back stitch and just in the spot between them. And somebody pointed out in class that they were seeing a gap between my back stitches. I don't think there really is one. I'm trying to go down in the same hole when I do my back stitch, but since I'm working on black wool felt, I think as the stitches pull down in, you are seeing the black through there on the sides. So once more, my straight stitches, four of them. And there's no magical order to these. If you prefer to go across from each other, that's fine, or right next to each other, that's fine. And then again, the next one is going to be two lazy daisies, so I would just do that down the whole length of whatever I was putting this combination stitch on. Okay, to finish this off, we are going to come back and add a French knot in the center of each of those straight stitches. Um, if you're following the card, we are not putting them in the center of the lazy daisies. You certainly could. No reason you can't. It's yours. But we're just going to work. And I'm just working two wrap ones because based on the size of my um, straight stitches, a three wrap kind of overpowers it. So just all the way down the row in the center of those four straight stitches. And that will finish off that combination. Our final combination with the Lazy Daisy is Lazy Daisy, straight stitch, and colonial knot. I did mark a horizontal line. And on that line, I am putting two Lazy Daisies. Just laying on the line, straight across from each other, sharing a center point. And then I'm coming back in from the center and doing a vertical one. And my goal is to keep those petals pretty much the same length, but if you don't, it doesn't matter because if you start measuring petals and stuff in nature, they probably aren't all exactly the same length. And then I just go over and work another combination. And this one ended up being smaller and closer together than my others were. So you're just going to keep going down the line as far as you want to go, working groups of three Lazy Daisies, two on the line and one going straight up vertical from that line. What I see when I look at the card is that we come back down this line and work two straight stitches off the bottom of our group of three Lazy Daisies, which just means it's a very short back stitch and then out of that center and you're, if you just did it like I did you're not going to be able to come up in exactly the same hole or you'll just pull that last stitch out we're going to work two lazy daisies so basically leaves coming off that straight stitch or back stitch And 
then I'm going to do it again. If I come into the center of it, well, I'm still going to come down in the same. Don't have to. Okay. So if you don't work it exactly like a back stitch and just look to see where you're going to come down and up, then you can bring your needle up in the same hole there in the center. I'm not paying enough attention. I'm almost getting or am getting some twisted detached chains there rather than lazy daisies. You could certainly do that too. To finish this combination off, we're coming back and working colonial knots in the center of our group of red and also one right above the petal that is going straight up. Now if I was working on something that was see-through, I would either be knotting off or I would be weaving my threads in on the back. But since I'm working on felt and this is not going anywhere but on a video, I'm just going to jump from spot to spot in the interest of time. And these are just a couple combinations, well, three combinations, with a Lazy Daisy. But if you look, there are all kinds of things you can do with a Lazy Daisy. Here are my finished or close to finished combinations for the Lazy Daisy. As always, they look much better when they're in color.